Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. I know it's been raining in some places, so I hope everybody can join. Okay, as usual, we're gonna check first about the platform. This is the class of today. Today we'll be finishing this, the third week actually. So we have two more weeks to go. And this is the question for today. Remember that tomorrow we should be finishing exercise 214 and also the midterm test. So I'm gonna send on Friday the grades for this. It's very important. If you have questions, let me know. So there are some errors, mostly in this one. Remember that how it's going to be the, the structure and also remember everybody that I guess on the number four is it. Yeah, and no, it's not this. Where was it? Number four, I guess. Number four, right. Yeah, on the number four, there is a misspelling. I mean, you, for you to have that correct, you have to enter mistaking this word. It doesn't have to be also, but Oslo. I don't know why. It's an error in the platform. So you just enter that way and everything will be fine, okay? So if you have questions, let me know, and it will be a pleasure to help you out. Before we move on, we are going to check the attendance, of course. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present, teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present, teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. José Osmín Rivas Navas. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, so today we're gonna start with a little video about training, of course, says the seven steps for highly effective employee training and coaching. Okay, so I'm going to show you at the end, of course, you are going to provide feedback or opinions about the video. This is a short video actually. So here we go. Do you need to train employees for a new skill or to perform a new task? I'll explain the seven steps for highly effective employee training in this video. Hello, I'm Steven Goldberg of Optimus Performance, bringing you practical tips and ideas on leadership, team development, and employee performance management in the workplace. Training employees is an essential skill required of both leaders, managers, and also other employees, because it's not always a manager that does the training. Sometimes, especially for new employees, you're gonna have another employee train them on specific tasks. But if the manager or employee doesn't know the steps to proper training, then you may end up with a result that's below what you expect in terms of performance. In our leadership and team development training programs, we do an exercise to teach people the steps for training. And we teach them how to tie a fire underwriter's knot using a wire. And the first thing we do is we hand out instructions. Nobody can do it, or few people just reading the instructions because it's hard to follow the steps without a diagram. We then hand out a diagram on how to do it, and still most people cannot do it just following the diagram. 
Then we demonstrate how to do it. Yeah, it seems that we sh uh, we seen this video already, right? I remember. Do you remember? Yes, yes, we we saw this video a couple of of classes ago. Okay, so I'm going to report that this is repeated. Very good, no problem. Then we're going to continue with what we were checking yesterday. So it says uh, setting up a questionnaire. You remember that yesterday we were talking about TNA. What is TNA? I'm sorry. Okay, does anybody remember what is TNA? Training remember the rest. Okay, perfect, very good, that is it, nice. So we will continue and finish this little thing and then we're going to continue with other article that is related to training. Also, I hope we can do a little dynamic today. So let's see how it goes. So it says, although there are no general rules for order on SABI questions, below are a few suggestions that researchers can follow when setting up a questionnaire. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Danny, could you please help us with the figure number six? Yeah, of course. Please move above. <laughs> okay. Or below. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> use warm up questions. Easier questions will easy will is will is 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 yeah. Will is the respondent into the survey, and will set the tone, and the and the topic of the survey. Sensitive question should not appear at the beginning of the survey. Try to put the respondent at ease before addressing uncomfortable issues. You may also prepare <clears throat> the reader for this sensitive question with some sort of greeting, greeting preface, preface. Consider transition questions that make logical links. Try not to mix topics. Topics can easily be placed into sets of questions. Try not to put the most important question last. Respondents may become bored or tired before they get to the end of the survey. Be careful with contingency questions. If you answered yes to the previous question, etc. If you are using a combination of open and closed end closed end questions, try not to start your survey with open ended questions. Respondent will be more likely to answer the survey if they are allowed to ease of closed questions first. Good, so what did you get from this? Well, there are, um, <laughs> are several <laughs> tips for, uh, I think, a questionnaire. A questionnaire, and uh, when you prepare the questionnaire, um, you, you have to uh, follow these, these tips. And it, uh, first, um, you have to, to make a, a kind of introduce question to warm up the, the, the environment, not, not enter with the principal questions uh, at the beginning, right? And well, and not to, don't let the principal question at the end because the, the, the inter, viewer i think it's an interviewer uh, yeah, maybe see. maybe tired right in the the answer that you that you are looking for maybe don't be the the, the good enough right yeah. and something like that and then 
um, I remember <laughs> and uh, again the, the back in the days in my days in my in the university <laughs> when <laughs> we I, I learned that. <laughs> Very well, perfect. Uh, yes, this is something like very, very like professional, right? So the English that we're learning right now. So, but it's a good thing because now it's in English and we can check some things. So good. And uh, yeah, there are several things that we need to into consideration. So whenever we're going to create a survey or uh, the questionnaire. So uh, easier questions, we're responding to the survey and we set the tone and the topic of the survey at the beginning. So warm up questions are very important. Let's check some uh, vocabulary. I know that you got the idea on this one. What is to ease? Uh, similar to facilitate. Very good, to facilitate, nice. And then it says sensitive questions. What are sensitive questions? like a personal or private topic it could be something like that so are like questions that are kind of difficult for the respondents to answer because they might provide negative feedback they are angry about something they have opinion about something i think is a it's also a question that a good to make uncomfortable uh, someone. Yeah, that might be uh, the case. Uh, you might feel uncomfortable about certain situations to provide feedback or to speak about yourself or anything like that. Okay, and let me see if there is any other. Sort of, what is sort of? Order. Okay, very good. Yeah, it can be the way of something to be organized. And let's see. I remember there was another one. What are contingency questions? Will be some question that can make a conflict. Okay, very good. Or question like um, backup question. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So sometimes you have seen on the service that there are questions that it says, "Have you had problems with the elevator, for example?" And if you say yes, then the next question is, "Which problems do you have? Could you please tell me which of those ones?" So they are related, right? Let's see. And uh, there's no other, I guess. Okay. Let's move on. So this is uh, like uh, types of questions and answer format for the questionnaire. So let's see. Uh, Jose Wilfredo, could you please help us with this? Sure, teacher. Uh, well, objective response. These are questions that can be answered with a simple yes or not. Example, have you ever attempted any training course on DMD? Multiple choice. Each question provided several possible answer, answers uh, from which to choose. Example, how many times have you attended training course? One time, two times, three, three times, four times. Escalate, escalate response. Each question has the described. Descriptive. Descriptive, descriptive, and or numerical scale for responding. Example: How important do you feel it is for newly recruitment recruiting official to participate in our orientation program? But important, somewhat important, never important nor unimportant, uh, somewhat unimportant, not important. Okay, what do you get from this? Oh, this gave us some examples uh, according, according with great and sorry be. And it's really important when you maybe 
don't have a, a clarify uh, that part when you have to create one sorry okay so yes uh, whenever depending on the objective of the survey or, or the questionnaire you can choose the best option of questions right yeah okay um let me check if there are any words here i don't think let's see there was something uh well descriptive what is descriptive in detail okay very good so whenever you describe something right and uh, newly what is newly very close very close might be yeah very new right the newest okay so the next part is going to be for Heidi could you please help us with the two paragraphs there is it possible yes teacher uh, in the process of planning the survey a survey plan which will be attached to formal letter interviewers will be formulated and will be distributed to concerned agencies and interviewers. The outline of the survey plan includes the following background, objectives, schedule, survey team, method methodology, data collection, and analysis. Once you have constructed a questionnaire, you will need to make a plan that outlines how to, how and to whom you will administer, um, administer. A number of options are available in order to find a relevant sample group amongst your survey population. In addition, various considerations are involved with administrating the survey itself. Sorry, Perfect. I'm not carrying my glasses. Ah, okay, but, don't worry, that's fine. What so I what... got from this uh -huh. is the, um, this kind of, of service that you have to do with, with another company. For example, the one that has to deal with, with uh, human resources and stuff, the ones that, that they know how your, your work environment is working that kind that that the company shouldn't do itself okay but with a third party yeah. for example mm -hmm. okay very well so yes uh there is this is like a process remember that everything is linked and this is a very good thing because it's it's a plan it's a whole plan the one that we're checking right now so and uh, let me just check what new words or what words can we describe What is outline? Anybody? Like the, <coughs> sorry, the whole plan of the of the survey. Okay, very good. So it's like the structure, everything that it should be there, right? Good. And let me check any other. There is no other, I guess. Okay, let's move on. Um, it says in Pilot, the following methods were used for data collection. Stratified sampling method was used by selecting respondents. The following analyses were used. So we're going to check in this specific example, what is the, what was used, okay? Uh, the first two is going to be, uh, is it possible for you, Juan Miguel? Yes, Maybe. yes, I think. Okay, think, maybe, maybe just the first one, so we can go one by one. Okay, review. Yep. Okay, review of secondary data or information. Review of existing data and information on the decentralization process, regulations, broadcast and law, and policy paper, 
strategy on D plus D in the realms of training materials produce, produced by the MOI and uh, research papers produced by research institutes and other donors, especially UNDP and GTZ on capacity development for the MOI, sorry, MOI officials and community council members in the area of D plus D. Very good. So I know that there are many uh, things that are very specific for this example that we don't know, but in general, what did you get from this? Sorry, sorry. Uh, no worries, I, I understand. Okay, uh, in this case, there are two there are two things that you have to consider. Uh, data who is uh, previous pre previous data, okay, uh, and uh, let's see. Uh -huh. the, the previous data, uh, and it, it mentioned about, uh, I think there are organizations, practice and law, uh, and uh, the policies in, in, in the office, okay? All the policies that, uh, that you can uh, look for. And for the other hand, uh, in the second, point uh, there are some papers but those papers are like documents okay or documentation about uh, these organizations UNDP and GTC uh, I think okay yeah, that is it. I know that as I was telling you that this is with a lot of information for this specific case that is in Cambodia. But, uh, well, yeah, for the first thing that they did is to review the existing information, the existing data that they have, right, about the regulations, about the policies, all the information that they had. And then also research papers, meaning that there were some people investigating about this. So they are going to compare, right? So that is a very good thing because they are going to review what exists in the institution and also they are going to research, I mean, read and compare with the papers on the research outside. So nice, that's good. Okay, individual survey. Uh, actually, we will see the survey below. And uh, there is no questions here. I was checking, okay, any words. And uh, this one is going to be for Ada Azucena, individual <coughs> survey. Okay, teacher. The in the individual service, the T T N N I question was designed to make up this about the simple and relative quick to complete be provide top boxes to pick in the most categories. Rather than writing right responses, such the same increases staff participation, the TNI questionnaire covers the following individual job description, the level level of the knowledge on DAD knowledge, and training. Huh? Sorry, teacher. Knowledge. Knowledge on DAD and training attending. Training needs to a specific knowledge and a skill and the problem identified in the terms of performing the do, do duties, this, do this more effectively fill copies in the questionnaire were collapsed and the rule. Is the session the TNA, the questionnaire is uh, there. For me is the, the cover, the formula is a specific the in the, the job, a uh, description, the, the level and the knowledge, and the attended training, 
and then training and needs specific knowledge skills. Okay, very good. So they say that the individual survey, so there is a survey that they have designed and uh, they try to make it both simple and quick to complete, fast. So it's easy to understand. So they can just check some things and that's it. And uh, it says that covers, I mean, this is very important because it's not only easy, but it covers everything that they wanted. Individual job description, level of knowledge, training attended, training needs for specific knowledge and skills, problems identified in terms of performing the duties more effectively. So it's very complete. And that is very important whenever we're going to design a survey. So definitely it's very, very important. And uh, there is no word here that I would like you to tell me about. So uh, group discussion, that is going to be for, for let's see, Maria Alejandra. Okay, okay. Uh, group discussions, uh, in addition to the DNA questionnaire, a total of 39 group discussions on a variety of training needs were held with officials. A document a title, title. Battle, title guide questions was prepared to obtain our organiza, organizational perspective on training on training requirements and verify the results of the DMI questionnaire. The following were the main topics of discussion. E, A, the A, that, our one, sorry, <laughs> task and job, le, uh, two level of knowledge on D, D, and, uh, D, and D. D, and D, yeah. Three training sessions attend, uh, four training needs, and five problems identi identified in terms of performing the work duties. Good, what did you get from this? Mm. Maybe that. In a group of discussion, you need a questionnaire to or prepare a questionnaire for to for to um, I don't know say that um, plasmar um to show or something uh, like that. Uh -huh, to show that um. What the what topic do you need to have uh, answers and you need a specific question that to ask I am maybe that full of the steps that say in a paragraph that they make a task and try to for the questionnaire to and identify the level of that the persons have and that depend the result if you create a house need and the training and because you know that the problems that the um, def, um, deficiency of def, uh, deficiencies uh -huh, deficiencies or like this Okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you. So, yeah, this is very interesting because you see that in this company, in this institution, because this is part of the government there in Cambodia, they have done different things. So they can identify it better. It's not just the survey, for example. They also made some group discussions. So they identify and then they can compare what happens in the survey and what happens in the group discussions. So they identify better the training needs. So that is very, very professional. And it says that 
uh, they had this with 39 group discussions. So a lot of people, remind that if you have six, 10 people in each group, you have a lot of people in that one. And also there were some topics for the discussion, tax and jobs, so what they do, level of knowledge, training, sessions, attendance, training need, problems identified in terms of performing the work duties. So it's a very good thing. I believe it's a very, very professional way. And let's see some words. Uh, what is held? The past of hold. Very good. So very good. That is it. And let's see. I don't think there is any other here. Okay, okay. This is step three, collect data. So this is the next step. That is going to be, let's see, for Roxanne. The three step in TNI is so collect data throughout uh, reviewing document on, uh, on existing training secondary data and information, and conducting survey, including interviews and observ observation at work. Step one, okay, identify. Actually, that is not necessary, okay. but the paragraph, the one that is below. Okay. Um, it's, it's important to collect and a reviewing, sorry, it's important to collect and review secondary data and information prior. Prior, yeah. Prior to conducting interviews service. It will lead GDLA task for members to understanding and utilizing existing knowledge and experiences in the areas of DAD reform and local administration ex experiences of DOLA, MOI, and particular, which has significant experiences engaged in, capac in capacity development at the community level, can be referred to prove the applicability to PILAC. What did you get from this one? Well, uh, let me see. Basically, it's talking about the... Uh, I imagine that this is talking about the, the manuals, for example, or uh, when the company collect information about the employees or training and it's important to review all the information about that uh, because uh, first one, you need to have uh, data with the information update and in the consequence, uh, you need to create a uh, feedback about the training or about some specific topic. And that's why uh, the company or the uh, person that given the training uh, need to get that information. And it's important to uh, have the um, correct information about the data. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, this is the third step. So it means that whenever we we uh, get the data, I mean, we get the service, we get the information. So we were going to review that information so we can organize the data. So this step is just to collect and organize the data. Good, and there is no word here, I guess. Let me just check something that we can know. Okay, it says, uh, well, there are two other paragraphs about this one. Let's see. Francisco Eduardo, could you please read that? Yo, 
Hello, is it possible for you to read? Yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, the following, teacher. Uh, no, based. Ah, uh, based. Based on the questionnaire. 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 Quest questionnaire. Uh -huh. Based on the questionnaire for individual survey and Sorry. guide survey and guide question for group discussion developed during the preparation stage. Step two, practice of the questionnaire should be conducted with officials who will be the target population to see the applicability of the question. Is that an interview seem to have any difficult in answering those questions? It should be not those points and modify the question to make it easier to answer. After testing, the GDLA task force should revise and formulate the questionnaire based on the result of the pretest. Okay, continue, please. The following five steps are to be taken in conducting a group discussion. Uh, how do you say that, teacher? <laughs> number one. Okay, number one. Number one, orientation of objective and content of the survey for interviewees. Number two, explaining questionnaire, questionnaire, individual questionnaire. survey. Uh -huh. Questionnaire, sorry, teacher. Individual survey. Number three, conducting a group discussion with a guide question. Number four, wrapping, wrapping up the interview. And number and four. Uh, that is four. Well, it should be five, but that is like an error. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's six. <laughs> okay. <laughs> number five, modify method, process, and Questionnaire is needed. A prototype cycle of conducting a broad discussion is show the figure below. However, to cycle and process can be modified according to a survey plan. Okay, what do you get from this? Um, it's a lot of information. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, I, I, of course, a general idea is fine, don't worry. Okay, teacher. Uh, I understand that uh, is the uh, this is a step a step for uh, make a survey. Um, I think it is the the a professional survey uh, because uh, uh, I I think the the survey is for. Um, uh, take a uh, uh, how do you say a uh, como tomar una muestra a sample a sample sorry this is the word was uh, take a, a sample for the market and for this point a uh, uh, take a decision uh, about the uh, the decision for a, a new business or, or a new training. I, I understand uh, that uh, about the power of this. Okay, very well. Perfect, thank you very much. So yes, uh, based on the questionnaire, we need to uh, move on and test the interview seem to have any difficult answering, check if everything is fine. And also, uh, for whenever you are going to conduct the graph discussion. So let's see if there are any words. I don't think so. Wrapping up. What is to wrap up?
summarize. To summarize, very good. And what is a prototype? It's a version of something. Initial version. Very good. An initial version of anything, right, that you are building. So you can test it and then make some changes. Good. Okay. And it says, it is important to know that the survey team will, one, introduce yourself, two, explain the objectives and contents for, of the survey and the reasons for selecting interviewees, three, show appreciation for taking their time, four, obtain permission to record the interview. In doing so, the interviewees can be prepared and feel more comfortable to answer questions. So those are guidance that whenever you are going to build or to conduct an interview or a team survey or anything like that, you need to consider, right? So to provide the directions in a clear way, things like that, okay? And there are prototypes process of the group discussions. So the number one says orient objectives and contents for interviews. So of course, that is the first thing. So for them to, to be aware of what they are going to do there in the survey or, or in the meeting. Number two, explain about questionnaire and that is individual. And number three, conduct a group discussion with guide questions. And number four, wrap up the interview. And of course, number five, modify methods process questionnaire. So those are the things that we need to, to correct. We need to do to correct the prototype that we're going to have. So we can test it and we can check if that is working. We're not going to do the part that one. But we're going to check the figure number nine, tips for developing interview questions. And that is going to be for Fernando Gonzalez. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay. Uh, tips for developing in interview questions, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, place easy to answer open-ended question at the beginning. This will help the interviewee to begin talking and can help to develop trust and rapport. Please place, uh -huh. place important question near the beginning of the interview. Ensure that each question matches a state objective. <clears throat> Second question from general to a specific. Uh, sequence, creo, ¿no? sí, yeah. sequence question sí. from general to specific, sequence and cluster question in a logical order, ensure that questions are clear, concise, and concise, jargon. concise, concise, and jargon. Jargon free, yeah, jargon. Jargon free, okay. Uh, be sure that questions are appropriate for the skill and experience levels of the target audience, provide adequate space between questions to record information, pilot test interview question, make appropriate provisions. Good, what did you get from that? Uh, like I said, our tips for, for present and a very good interview, not, not a um, improvisar. Improvise. Uh, not a improvised interview. In a, maybe you need to present uh, interview very structured. And because you need to um, get, gather in a specific information and gather the best information. So you need to an order of the question, logical order, concise, clear, and so on. And that you will get the best, uh, the best answer or the best result for evaluate uh, the interview in general. Very good, perfect. So that is it. Man. So there are tips for developing interview questions. So. Many, I mean, all of those are very important. And of course, we need to organize everything in a way that everybody understands. 
Let's check some words. Uh, let's see. What is yeah, jargon? Ah, oh, we're gonna check onto that one, of course. Um, what is trust? Trust is reliable. Reliable, very good. Good. And what is a report? Anybody? Very conversation. Yeah, to make that in a conversational way, right? Like friends, like be comfortable the other person. Okay, what is, let's see. Well, this I like a sequence question from general to specific is very important. What is cluster? Is to a group or something? Very good, it's to group. So sometimes there are questions from IT, some questions for HR, some questions for your specific job. So you need to group them in the best way. Uh, what is to be concise? Something specific? Yeah, so you have to be very specific, not to speak in general about many other things that are not relevant. Now we go to the one that is jargon. What is jargon? Okay, jargon is like a language, uh, the vocabulary that you use only in specific, let's say area or... Okay. Will be something like a slam? Well, slang is more street language. It could be jargon, it could be slang. But sometimes mm -hmm. jargon is like, for example, in mind that you work in a bakery. So you are talking about words that only people that works there know. So that is jargon. So for example, here, uh, here we have PILAC and we have DGLA, those are jargons. So we know that that is for that institution, but we don't know what is that. So when you start speaking in jargon, the people, they do not, do not understand that. Teacher, is the language specific for the job? It could be, as we were saying in general, it's could, it could be something that a group of people know what is this about, but other people, they don't know. So yes, it could be also street language. It could be slangs okay. as well. Okay. Let's see any other. What is a pilot test? Uh, <clears throat> a short test that are for a sample, only for, for a sample people, okay? Very good. So it's like a test that you do. Mm -hmm. So you, uh -huh, go ahead to try something uh, before you're going to deploy. Experiment. Very good, so that is it. So when you do, when you test it and then you correct things, so everything is going to be very well whenever you launch that for the rest of the people. Good, perfect. And well, at the beginning, there are some vocabulary words. Uh, this one. So uh, this is a little glossary about this document. I guess it's interesting. So uh, let's see. Jose Osmin, could you please read the first one? Competency. Which one? The first one, competency. So an observable behavior supported by specific knowledge, the skills, and attitudes, which com comparison has a specific, a specific result or out of, out of Very good. What did you get from that one in your own words? Yeah, OK. 
okay, that uh, actually that each person has a specific behavior and also knowledge. And so it, it like, not a, like, like competitive and like get an uh, excellent result. Okay, very good actually that is it. So whenever, well, when you go to training and that is based on competency, uh, you expect people to to do something or to act in a different way whenever they have the, the competency. You expect to observe that they actually they are doing the job the way that it should be or to change some misbehavior that they might have. Very good. Content analysis. That is going to be for Marcus. Okay, content analyzing. So what well, I don't see what well, okay. A I'm procedure sure. for uh, there is a, a, a line in there. So yeah, I guess somebody was like drawing there. So let's do something. I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to do it again. So that disappears. That is it. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thanks. A procedure for organizing narrative and qualitative data into emerging terms, terms and concepts, usually, usually associated with quantity, quantity form of analysis in which the terms are termed or measured. Okay, what did you get from this in your own words? Okay, um, then, the terms. How is the current pronunciation and what is the meaning of Which one? Teams? Teams? Uh, teams? No. Teams. 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 Uh -huh. teams. What does it mean? Well, it's like a topic. Ah, okay, okay, perfect. Okay. okay. So, the Ah, okay, okay, okay. So it's like a, a summary for the for the topic that the, for example, some people will will give to others. It's like a, a, a brief um, summary, uh, and yeah, it's like a main idea about the the topics, the content that are going to be. Uh, and, uh, analysis. Perfect, that is it. So whenever you have all the information, uh, all the content, you need to analyze that one and then get like the most important things or trends or anything that is relative with this one. So, and let me check if there are any other words. Quantitative form, no, I don't think so. Okay, feasibility analysis. That is going to be for, let's start all over. Heidi. Uh, sorry, teacher, which, which one is it? It's going to be feasibility analysis. Feasibility analysis, a cost benefit analysis, an analysis complete prior to conducting training. It is an estimated of the cost of the training weighed against the possible benefits that could be achieved if training were conducted. Okay, you don't worse. Uh, it talks about um, the, the benefits we're going to get with this training, if it's worth it. Sure. That is it. So it's going to be a good investment. That is it, right? You are going to invest in this training and uh, is, is it going to be relevant for me? So it's going to be uh, the return of the investment is going to be satisfactory things in that one, right? Cost benefit analysis. And let me see if we can find, okay. It says of oh, the waning weight, what is weight? OK, 
okay that is like how important something is going to be right something like that okay gap analysis that is going to be for let's see Ada Cáceres okay teacher the gap analyze also called performance analyze identify identifies the difference between current performance and the desired performance yes uh, that is it and your own words yes um for me is um uh, the uh, the gap analyze is a tool that they identify the gaps and therefore are uh, always you to put in the place and the action plan they uh, to achieve the certification for example it can also help you with the resource planning and the team later, for example okay very good so as we checked before this is like an analysis for us and identify where we are right now a diagnostic and where we want to be definitely interview uh, Yvonne is it possible for you Yvonne Not possible. Okay, uh, Jose Wilfredo. Well, it will be. Uh, it will be interview. Interview. The process of asking questions to express or performance to identify training needs. Okay, I guess this is very clear, right? So it's like, yeah, yes. you go and interview somebody or you go to an interview. Okay, job analysis, that is going to be for Juan Miguel. Okay, Joe, <clears throat> Joe analysis. The process of identifying all the parts of a specific job conducted before a task analysis. Okay, in your own words. Um, is that process when you explore uh, what things that what what things are that you have to or that have to be done? Okay, and and why and how and how. So I think this is the, the process of job analysis. Very good, that will be it, nice. So we when we identify the parts of a specific job, the tasks that they do, right? Good, learning objectives, Roxanne. Describe a specific behaviors, conditions, level of achievement and gridden from the learner's point of view. Okay, your own words, what do you get? Uh, well, um, let me see. The first one, uh, we need to uh, have the knowledge about the objectives and in general of the company or some process and try to um, understand the, um, the objectives and the process were, were working both together all the time and just looking for the goals. But the first one, you need to uh, identify and try to uh, analyze and analyze. Analyze. analyze, analyze, sorry, thank you the objectives and be clear with that. Okay, very good, that is it. So uh, it's the description of some behavior conditions or things that we want from the uh, perspective of the learners. Uh, it needs assessment, Francisco Eduardo. Uh, 
Is it possible for you, Francisco Eduardo? Okay, not possible. Jose Osmin. <coughs> Not possible either. Uh, Fernando Gonzalez. Need assessment. Uh, gathering of information about a specific war need that can be resolved by training. The types of needs assessment include performance analysis, target population analysis, certain training needs and when, analysis and task analysis. Okay, what do you get from this in your own words? Uh, it's a process to determine a, a needs in one's a, training that the company needs. Very good. Okay, so that is it. So we, uh, we are looking for information about specific word that a gap that needs to be resolved and then we have to analyze right we have we need to evaluate all the aspects that we want to so performance target sorting uh, job analysis tax analysis there are many ways that we can identify what are the needs for that one uh, what is gathering everybody To collect something. To collect yeah, something. To collect, to obtain, in this case, uh, info, maybe. Good. That is it. Yeah, to collect information. Okay. Uh, actually, we're going to stop for a while. We're going to check the attendance, and then we're going to continue. Okay. Ada Susana Cáceres, Mendoza. Present, teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present, teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. José Osmín Rivas Navas. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Gracias. Good. Steven Vladimir Villa Corta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Perfect. Okay, so we are going to continue. So I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Sorry. Don't worry. I'm gonna take it. Okay. So let's finish this part. Okay. The next one is needs once analysis. That is going to be for. Let me just go back here. For. Yvonne is not here, right? Maria Alejandra. Hi, teacher. Hi. And needs versus one analyst. Okay, discovery training needs that are related to the organization's work. Training is linked to the final outcome and providing appropriate training will benefit the individual as well as the organization. What do you get in your words? 
Uh, maybe when you implement a training, uh, first you or the reason what you uh, try to do is because you have a need and um, need to analyze different um, um, KPIs or the different uh, of our goals or um, objectives for the organization. And if you know that how, how who needs uh, and the impact uh, if you implement, you try okay. to do a um, fast or that you or you uh, explore and uh, explotar su beneficios. Explode the benefit. Explode the benefit for uh, the employees and the organization for to well or well that or improve the these different objectives. Okay. okay, perfect, that is it. So yes, it's going to analyze the needs of the department and what do you want them to do? So you can identify the best training for them. Performance analysis, that is going to be for Roxana. Okay. Also now has a gap anal analysis. Performance analysis looks at an official's current performance and identifies whether the officials is performing as desired. Okay, your own words. Mm, let me see. I'm not sure, teacher, maybe um, when mentioned uh, performance and analysis is uh, talking about uh, improve some specific uh, point. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Well, actually it's very similar to the gap analysis, right? So whenever you are going to analyze the performance of a job, of a department, of a company, and then you will be able to, to identify uh, where are the gaps so you will be able to, to provide the right training. Okay, project team says GDL task for members and that is something for, for this specific thing. Target population, yeah, that is something that we can analyze. Danny Josue, could you please help us with target population? Target population. The individual or group involved in needs assessment or training program. Okay, your own words. Well, um, is this is uh, just the, the group of of people that we we want to um, from from um, from from then we want to obtain our information. Very good. So that is the target people that we're going to aim the training, right? Or the assessment to check if they need training. Good. The other one says task analysis. That is going to be for, let's see, Fernando Gonzalez. Sorry, teacher. Yeah, task analysis, please. Task analysis. Okay. Uh, find the best method and sequence of a step to complete a specific task. 
in your own words? Uh, is the way to find a method that um, is the best for for complete and an specific task of the job or of the company. Okay, very good. So yes, it's like the, to find the best way for a person to complete a task, right? Step by step. Very good. Trainer, Marcus. Okay. Uh, trainer. Okay. A term used in a corporate setting, a corporate setting for a teacher, also instructor. Instructor. That is very easy, right? In your own words, what you can say. Trainer. Okay. Yeah, it means uh, a person who will be in charge to to give to give inform to give information about any process or any new procedure. And yeah, they have to it's, you have to train the employees. Okay, very good, perfect. Uh, training needs assessment, Raymond. Is it possible for you, Raymond? Not possible. Jose Osmin, is it possible for you? Yes. Okay. okay. Which one? Yeah, the last one, training needs assessment. Okay. Okay, the method of the training is if a training is and is the best. What training is required to fill the gap? Okay, in your own words. Okay, so this is about the method, right? That you are going to identify that is the best for you to identify or assess or evaluate if there is a need of a training, what is that need and how you can solve it. If it's possible to do it with the training or with any other way, like motivation or things like that. So as we were. Yeah, that is it. Okay, good, good. So this is the end of this little article. And now we're gonna see a video. Uh, this is something that we haven't seen because I brought it. So uh, as usual, we're going to watch the video and then we're going to provide feedback, opinions or comments. So my friends, here we go. Certifications have served as a stepping stone for anybody seeking to advance in their careers, whether they are beginners or seasoned professionals. According to Robert Half's 2021 IT salary report, IT professionals with certifications earn 5% to 10% more than their peers. So in this video, we'll go over the finest certifications that can help you attain a good compensation package. At number 10, we have web development. Web development has been around for a long time since every company needs a website to advertise or sell their products. This domain typically comprises three categories, front-end development, back-end development, and full-stack development. A certification in any programming language, such as Python, Node.js, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or Angular, might improve your chances of snagging a lucrative job offer. However, if you are more inclined towards full stack development, then Simply Learn's postgraduate program in full stack web development in collaboration with Caltech might prove to be an amazing option for you. This extensive course covers 13 different web development tools, enabling you to master front end and back end development along with DevOps lifecycle. <clears throat> The average salary for this domain ranges from $62,000 to $158,000 in the US and 13.7 lakh to 30 lakh rupees in India. 
Next up, we have number nine, cybersecurity. Working remotely has become the new norm since the COVID epidemic, but this has brought a lot of cyber threats with it due to remote access to IT infrastructure and the use of collaboration tools on endpoint devices. To prevent cyber attacks, companies need certified cybersecurity and networking professionals. Some of the popular networking certifications you can pick up are CompTIA Network Plus certification will provide you with fundamental knowledge of networking concepts, network security, network operations, and troubleshooting. You can also take up the CISSP, Cisco CCNA, and CCNP certifications. These certifications are considered professional level certifications. They can show off your ability to work with Cisco networking solutions. A network engineer or cybersecurity expert earns approximately $84,000 to $164,000 per annum in the United States and 5 lakh to 40 lakh rupees in India. At number 8, we have Agile Scrum. Scrum is a common framework for collaborating with teams. Scrum procedures enable businesses to efficiently adjust with rapidly changing requirements in order to create products that align with constantly evolving business objectives. The Scrum Alliance offers a certified Scrum Master certification if you want to get started with Scrum. The certification will assist you in comprehending the Scrum framework as well as team roles, events, and other assets. It will also allow you to teach Scrum ideas, concepts, and practices to your organization. A certified Scrum Master can earn up to $100,000 to $170,000 per annum in the United States and up to 13 to 22 lakh rupees in India. Now, for number seven, we have robotic process automation. RPA is a technique in which businesses utilize AI and bots to run their operations. For instance, if you launch a web application to connect with the support staff, the first thing you'll look into is the chatbot. The chatbot will present you with a variety of questions and after you select one, it will offer you an immediate response to your query. This is achieved using RPA. To get into this domain, you will have to learn tools such as Blue Prism, UiPath, and Automation Anywhere. The UiPath Academy provides you with free training depending on the examination you opt for. Also, you can opt for Automation Testing Master's program by Simply Learn. This course covers more than 15 automation testing tools and technologies to make your profile stand out as an automation test engineer. A certified RPA engineer can earn up to $88,000 to $140,000 per annum in the United States and 7 lakh to 20 lakh rupees in India. Now for number 6, PMP certification. Project management entails managing a team to achieve its objectives and be successful within a given time frame. Some of the best certifications you can obtain for this domain are, first, there is the project management professional certification provided by the project management professional. The certification addresses domain concepts such as initiating, planning, executing, coordinating, managing, and closing. You can also pick up Simply Learn's PMP Plus certification, which covers the concepts of project management, Scrum Master, Lean Six Sigma, and much more. With the proper certification, a project manager can make $75,000 to $144,000 per year in the United States and up to 12 lakh to 17 lakh rupees per year in India. Next up, we have number five, big data. Big data is a discipline that permits the analysis, extraction, and management of massive and complex data collections. The following are some common certifications that you can pursue. The Associate Certified Analytics Professional Credential allows you to begin the analytics process. It focuses on many analytics areas such as business issue framing, analytics problem framing, and many more. You could also pick up the CCP Data Engineer Certification. This certificate allows you to demonstrate your knowledge of ingesting, transforming, storing, and analyzing data in Cloudera's CDH environment. A big data engineer can earn $121,000 to $251,000 per annum in the United States. 
In India, he or she can earn close to 12.3 lakh to 33 lakh rupees per annum with the right certification. At number four, we have digital marketing. <coughs> Businesses can only succeed if their targeted customers are aware of their product or services. Thus, digital marketing is an essential component of every company's operations. As the area of marketing has evolved in the digital era, the demand for experts who have been trained in new abilities has increased substantially. A digital marketing certification can help you hone the skills such as SEO, PPC, web analytics, content marketing, and social media. Let's now have a look at some of the best certifications you can pick up. First off, you can take up Simply Learn's Digital Marketing Specialist Master's Certification, or you can take up certifications such as Google Ads Certification, Google Analytics Certification, and HubSpot Content Marketing Certification. All of these certifications touch upon concepts of digital marketing such as SEO, content marketing, PPC, digital analytics, social media, and so much more. A digital marketing manager could earn 60,000 to 160,000 in the United States and up to 7 lakh to 16 lakh rupees per annum in India. Next, we have number three, data science. It is a branch of computer science that integrates scientific techniques, algorithms, and systems to extract information and insights from organized and unstructured data. Let's look at a few top certifications that you can pick up for this domain. First and foremost, there is IBM's Data Science Professional Certification. This IBM back certification may help you get started with data science, Python, SQL, data analysis and visualization, building machine learning tools, and much more. Harvard X's Data Science Professional Certificate is another option for accreditation. It will cover our programming, data visualization, essential data science tools, machine learning methods, probability, inference, and much more. By choosing the right certification, a data scientist can earn up to 115,000 to 246,000 in the United States and 8.2 lakh to 20 lakh in India. Now for number two, let's have a look at cloud computing. No other area of IT has produced as much hype, excitement, and investment as cloud computing during the last decade. According to IDC, by next year, cloud will attain a growth rate of 22% and a value of $277 billion. And because of this, there will undoubtedly be a high demand for cloud experts. Some of the popular cloud computing certifications you can pick up are the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Certification. This certification will enhance your ability to architect, deploy, and secure applications on AWS, to use the appropriate architecture designs, and much more. You can also look into the Microsoft Certified Azure Administration Certification, which is ideal for people who want to manage cloud services that cover storage, security, networking, and cloud capabilities. A cloud computing engineer can earn up to 145,000 to 227,000 in the United States and earn close to 16 lakh to 24 lakh rupees in India with the right certification. And finally, we're at number one, AI and machine learning. What if machines can provide you with optimal data-driven decisions by perceiving patterns in previous data sets? How amazing will this be, right? This astounding fact about AI and ML domain has made it one of the most popular career choices. In the previous year's trends, AI has shown a staggering 344% growth, and the right certification can help you do wonders in this amazing domain. A few of them are Simply Learn's postgraduate program in AI and machine learning, created in partnership with Purdue University and in collaboration with IBM, covers a number of concepts like statistics, Python, machine learning, deep learning networks, NLP, reinforcement learning, and more. Machine Learning AI Certification by Stanford, available on Coursera, is also a good resource. 
This course includes an introduction to machine learning, data mining, statistical pattern recognition, the best practices in machine learning and AI, etc. An AI engineer can earn $140,000 to $386,000 in the United States and 6 to 20 lakh rupees in India. And there you go. That's our top 10 certifications to take up in 2021. With that, we've reached the end of this video. Do you agree with our list? Think we missed anything important? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching the video and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Okay, what did you get from this? Well, since the information and data or IT systems are, are so important for the companies, since information is one of the most important assets, so it talks about a lot of a lot of IT systems, right? And, and how to to get trained. Because it is it is so important because it helps companies take the best decisions. Very good. That is true. The most of the employees uh, that she was speaking about was about technology, right? A mm -hmm. lot of things. A lot of things. And it's going to be the future, of course, there are others, but if you really want to get a lot of money and uh, get trained or certifying things that are going to be very, very, I mean, everybody will be looking for that one, it will be that technology. Good, any other comment, opinion? Um, for example, I think uh, that all those awards, all those jobs that the, the, the girl said in the, in the video, uh, with this situation what, and what we are currently, uh, many of these jobs can be obtained in remote mod modality. So um, now I think it's easier to to get those those kind of, of jobs so and also we can obtain or get a certification online so if we have the time and the resources we can learn about any any of these these courses like uh, a new uh, language to to program and 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 cloud computing or, or cyber security. So if we have the kind of resources, I think we should, we should get into it. Very good. So you are so right. Uh, I mean, nowadays it's very easy to get certified. You just need to pick the best option. Of course, you need to check about the money that you will be investing into that one. But it's going to be very easy because online you can take certifications about many, many things. And even better, there are some of those that are for free. You don't have to pay or there are scholarships. For example, Insaforp, they provide scholarship for programming or things like that. So you can take advantage of that one. Very, very good. Okay, any other comment or opinion? In my opinion, uh, every prof prof profession mentioned in this video is really important because it uh, help, help us to inform what could be developed on every profession and also uh, gave an, an idea how much we could air if we take those training too. Because like the video says that the website is uh, open to everyone uh, to take the courses. And also it's really important because on all the courses that were mentioned, um, 
are eventually updated. I don't know if we will say that, that yeah, every exactly. time that is is advancing or, yes, I guess that update is necessary for all of the courses. Very good. I mean, everything is changing as you say, and uh, definitely there are many jobs there and may, may come another kinds of job that are going to be very profitable. Of course, they are very demanding. I mean, programming is not that easy. Sometimes I have some friends, you know, that they work for companies that they are programming. It looks very nice because, for example, they stay yeah. at home. They are working nice, a lot of money. Sometimes they have to travel to other companies, but they are very stressed out sometimes because only one little thing that they are doing sometimes is not working properly and they have to research and spend a lot of time researching on what is the problem so the project goes well. So it's not that easy. Yeah, and also the language that you are using for that one. I mean, there are many languages and that language is very extensive and it's always changing. So it's a dynamic world where you need to be also not only working, but studying as well. Yeah, the video mentioned uh, just six languages in one uh, uh, point. I guess that there are a lot of. Yeah, there are a lot of languages. Some of those are very old and maybe we don't use that anymore, but they yeah. are the base for the new languages, yeah. right? So right. it's, it's a lot. We it's could a, say it's a large field. Yeah, it's a large field. It's something, I mean, you can spend your whole life learning there. So, <laughs> yeah, it's that's a right. A lot, a lot. But it's a good payment. And if you like that one, I mean, because another thing is that you need to like it, right? So, if you like that kind of things, that is your thing. Yeah, that's right. Good, perfect. Thank you, Jose Wilfredo. Any other comments or opinion? I have an opinion to give. Uh -huh. Tell us. Um, I think that I always, I always think that it's important to spend in in, in your own education. And you no know, ways a certain in a certain way we are lucky to live surrounded by technology, and we have the opportunity to get information or or certification and in an easy way or sometimes for you you need to pay but but it's easy compared with with um other years before and i realized that in the video that maybe all the certification that explain is related with with this technology like, I don't know, Scrum Master, Network Certification, Project Management, and, I don't know, Programming, etc. So, it's, it's important that um, realize that this certification can um, boost your career and obtain new um, um, ingresos, no sé cómo se dice. Incomes. Income, ah, new incomes. And I don't know. <laughs> That's all the certification I would like to have in my CV. <laughs> but you yeah. know the the time is limited and the responsibilities not it's complicated, but in, in an important part is the language. We need English for both our professional career. Very good. Actually, you say something that is very important. English is not part of the certification, but because nowadays people believe that it's normal. I mean, it's like if you really want to be a good professional in any area, you need to speak English. So it's not something that is like a career that is going to be growing, but it's necessary. So if you need to or if you want to move on in your career or if you want to change your career or if you want to improve, English is always there. 
So definitely you are doing a very good job by now because I mean, your level of English right now is very good. I guess you will be able to take certifications in English, which are better than the ones in Spanish, right? Online in English, it will be a very good idea whenever you finish this, this courses of English, of course. Thank you for my teacher, thank you. Okay. Anybody else's, any other comments or opinion? Okay, I have a question for you all. So we can continue speaking about these things. How do you believe is going to be the future? How is going to be the world in the future? Talking about um, enterprise, I imagine that the most of the companies will try to or will work in a remote way because um, is a way to uh, don't spend a lot of money in some uh, cost and you know when you work from home uh, the most gasto, how do you say gasto? Expenses. Yeah, the expenses, the, the, the big expenses is paying for you. And I imagine that in the future, uh, a lot of company will try to uh, work in that form and save more money. Okay, very well. So you're talking about automation, so to automate things? Yeah, in some ways, um, because, you know, um, when the company try to um, improve some process, maybe they um, will looking for a system or maybe they will pay for a cheap, a service in another country, uh, like, such as India, for example, or something like that. And I imagine that um, the company try to looking for a service online, for example, uh, outsourcing, I guess. Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, oh. they will uh, have connection with other cultures, with other uh, systems around the world and try to um, automatize the process in their um, enterprise. Okay. And you know, here uh, in our country, maybe uh, the salaries are um, expensive, maybe if you compare the other countries, and I don't know, now I know that a lot of um, co-workers uh, give uh, extra service in the weekend in outsourcing platforms. And, you know, they uh, have some um, systems and they provide the service with that systems and that's why or oh, that's the reason why the why the companies try to um, improve some process without uh, a lot of uh, expenses because if if you can get a service online and you have to pay just for a a specific process and at the end you don't need to buy um, a system for example it's a safe for the company and that uh, company try to automatize the process okay 
actually you are very right. Nowadays, you can research and you will see that a lot of processes, for example, in warehouses are automated already. So also in the systems, I mean, for databases in the past was very difficult. I mean, to analyze databases, now it's very easy. And actually it's not only to analyze databases, but also to predict what is going to happen, to have a, a prediction, a machine learning model included. So yeah, the world is changing in that aspect and definitely is something that is going to happen very, very soon. Perfect, thank you, Roxanne. Any other opinion? How is going to be the world in the future, in any aspect, my friends? In your own opinion. In my opinion, maybe we'll, uh, we'll create some automata automation. Automation automation but no not too much but because i don't know how you feel when you have a problem with uh with a robot with a chat box you feel that maybe that robot that chat box uh, doesn't uh, provide the best resolution to your problems so i guess that some part maybe could be automation, but not, not at all. Okay. And that's my opinion. That's my point of view. Yeah, sometimes it's missing the human touch, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. when you go to a store and you express your, I mean, your frustration, you expect that one person says, oh, I'm sorry, you know, we're going to check what we can do for you. And, um, that a chatbot, I mean, even when they say the words, it's not going to be the same. Yeah, that's right. Good, perfect. And what about other aspects of the life? Do you believe that life is going to be better in the future? Yes, of course. Maybe the science will develop a lot of um, equipment that will... Then I say that the science will develop some equipment to make easy some process that may be stressful a lot. Okay. So uh, uh, go ahead. That is what I think. I don't know. But okay. It will be, uh, you know, the, the, the science is advancing every single day and we have a lot of new in bed. Yeah, well, we have a lot of new uh, research and we have a lot of new, uh, new thing discovering. So I guess that maybe will help us maybe with the health, uh, with a cancer or something like that. Very good, perfect, yeah. Uh, well, we expect the science is going to move faster. You know, for example, we've been struggling with sicknesses like cancer for a long time. There have been improvements, but yeah. still, still on the movement. And actually, there are some people that they point at some pharmaceutical companies that they, instead of researching, they are just stay that everybody just buy medicine and the it, right? So what is going to happen? We hope for the better, right? That yeah. they actually find the best way. Uh, problem is that there are many problems that we cause ourselves. For example, I was checking a documentary, a movie actually about a real life about, I don't know how to say that in English, but the pants of Teflon, you know? And uh, I didn't know, but in the United States, it's not permitted to use that anymore because that can cause cancer. But yeah. in El Salvador, everybody cooks in that one, right? So, <laughs> because we yeah. don't care here, we don't know about that kind of information, and uh, not, nobody does anything about that one. So, 
Mark Ruffalo is a lawyer. I'm sorry? Mark Ruffalo, I think, is the lawyer of, of that case. Yeah, do you, have you seen that movie? Yeah, it's a terrifying movie because, uh, be, because of what you're saying. <clears throat> Uh, they uh, explore and expose all of the bad reasons for use this uh, this component as a part of our lives because it it uh, I don't know how to say se pega into stomach or something like that yeah, and produce it. cancer uh -huh. and it 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 it's very. Uh, Old this case, I, if I don't remember bad, uh, but the movie is recent about two or three years, I think. But the the case, the really case is is too old. I I think is in seventies. Uh huh. So but, that is it. Uh huh. But no, it's it's uh, an unbelievable thing. Uh, believing uh, the best companies in the world are trying to to protect us or to um, making better things to a better life, but uh, not all not all the cases are, or not all the companies think. Uh, the same the same way because uh, <clears throat> there are uh, some companies that if they found uh, or they find a bad uh, thing in their process or in in their components, they go and substitute. Substitute. Uh -huh. They go and substitute these components, but in this case, it wasn't it wasn't like 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 that. And proof of proof of this that we are cooking every single day with uh, with Teflon uh, sartenes. I don't know. Pan. Pan. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, I mean that is something. Uh... That is a big problem, you know, because yes, we have advanced in technology in many aspects, but we still have people that they care more about money, right? Than health, about health of millions of people. So probably, I mean, I mean probably we are not going to have cancer because of that one, but the probabilities are going to increase, right? Remember that, I mean, that is something that was discovered a few years ago. Uh, and maybe we don't have the results of that one yet here in Latin America. So if you are cooking in that one for 20, 30, 40 years, maybe when you get to 50, 60 years old, maybe you are going to have some problems. And you are going to think, why? Why is this happening to me? It's because of many things like that, like the uh, the chemicals that goes into the food, right? Things like that. So in the future, I don't know, people really, uh, they're, they're going to fight and they're going to, to make this to stop happening. Do you believe, or it's going to be worse? I don't know, it's kind of strange. And I don't know what the future is going to bring. So that's why I'm asking you, what do you believe is going to happen in the future? I know that many good things like technology is going to be amazing, but life is going to be real good in the future, in 20 years and 30 years. What do you think? Uh, hi, anybody? Yeah, do you believe that we really are going to live better in the future? What good things 
do you believe that we are going to have in the future? And what bad things mm -hmm. do you believe that we are going to have in the future? I think, for example, I think uh, some things that we have currently in those days and uh, perhaps in the future, uh, some have found a, a, a cure or a solution for those funny sickness or, yeah. Um, and but I think, I, I think, for example, we we will be more depend on the technology. The the how is the current word? Depend. The depend the dependent. Yeah, we will depend a lot. Oh, okay, okay. So that's the so right. Imagine this. Uh, for example, uh, um, algorithm fails and um, sequence of things start to to fail in the same thing in the same moment a lot of critical things may may happen so perhaps um, depends so much on the technology it's not the covered solution so i think that and um, life expectation mm -hmm. i think will be longer perhaps okay with, uh, with more Cure for for sickness and perhaps of also I think the, the the thing related with the environment, the pollution, the the trash and another thing would be a, a good problem because I think we are about to the no return point in this year. So for example the, the plastic island will be greater than than those days and all all those problems will be affect us in the future so it's not a uh, good landscape for for now okay okay yeah I, I i agree with you i mean yeah maybe we are going to have a lot of good things but crisis resources uh, we are not going to have a lot of resources right because i mean the planet is some things are disappearing from the planet, right? So. Yeah, and also, for example, I I forget about I forget about this. Sorry, uh, the water because we are currently in a crisis of water. Just the case in in our country. Imagine in Africa or another country, they have made so much resources. So in the future will be. The people will be fighting for the water. <laughs> yeah, you are so right. Water is going to be, I mean, it's now sometimes <laughs> difficult to get right. And uh, well, we have the advantage that we live in a tropical uh, country. I mean, here it rains a lot. If the governments in the future, they want to invest in things like that, I mean, probably where we can take advantage of that, that aspect that we have a lot of water here. Uh, but that depends also on that. I mean, it's not that only rains, it's that also the people in charge of the government, they have to do something about it. I think teacher, uh, no, poverty, I think it's the right term. Yeah. Para la pobreza, poverty. Yeah. Poverty will be more, uh, pronunciado, no sé, como más, eh, más extremo. Yeah, it, it will eh, be more extreme. Will be more extreme because eh, some people will have the enough resources eh, and resources not only uh, water or, or things like that. Eh, Resources, I mean, uh, your incomes will be enough or more than enough in order to uh, to take or to have a better life. But <clears throat> on the other hand, uh, um, people or countries that uh, are always have been lived in poverty, I think it will be extremely, extremely 
more old, poor, yeah. Um, I think he, my, my country, our country is one of uh, the countries that it's not too extreme, okay? Because there are many people who works, okay? Uh, who have a job, who works, and who have uh, the resources. I am not talking about the enough. I am talking about the resources, okay? In order to have a good life. Good life, uh, it means at least education, uh, your basics, basic services. I don't know if it's okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, sometimes you can go outside just only for, for look. Okay, our country has many, many things, many places that you have to, that, that you could go. And maybe if you go with two sandwiches, uh, you could be great, but there are another countries in another uh, part, uh, like Africa, I mean, that maybe are not the same, uh, not, not like, here in El Salvador, the, the, the poverty is more extremely than, than here, and the resources are most limited. Limited, more limited. Uh -huh, are, are, are more limited that, than in, in our country. So, Okay, the, the technology can, uh, can cover many, many, many things, okay? But uh, it can be a detonant for this, this kind of cases or, or this kind of, uh, how to say, I don't know how, how is the best expression, um, como, to agrandar or to emphasize this type of to emphasize this kind of of things to emphasize uh -huh, to emphasize uh, if you have the enough resources you live good but if you don't have uh, it's it, it could be dangerous because um, uh, you know, we, uh, people in here, in, I don't know how to say, países subdesarrollados. Um, you could say on developing countries. Okay, on developing countries. Uh, to fight for a, for a right uh, is kind of dangerous, okay? So, I don't know, I think that's my opinion. Okay, very good. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's a lot to analyze, right? The world is changing, <laughs> things are happening again. So, for example, did you see the piece of news that in Japan, the first minister was killed? I mean, in the year 2023, I mean, that is something that maybe when we were there in the 50s, we were saying, oh no, in the future, that is not going to happen. But it's happening. The pandemic, the crisis, the economical crisis that we are current right now, bad things are happening. And of course, good things are happening because as we say, we have things that we never had before. Technology is moving, information is at hand. We have uh, a lot of good things and a lot of bad things. So I sometimes think, I like to think about the future, <laughs> what we can expect to happen in the world, in Latin America, in our country, you know, good and bad things are coming and we need to be kind of ready, right? Be checking the news and check what can we do so we, we can live better. Good. Any other comment or opinion?
no, no. Okay, perfect. So if there is no other question about the class of today, we're going to be finishing. Remember, remember to do the, the exercise 2.14 tomorrow or tonight, and also the midterm test. We need to finish on that one so I can send the, uh, the grades to Enzo Forp. And uh, if you have questions, let me know. I will be checking there the WhatsApp. You can send me any questions that you might have directly or also to the group all chat. Okay, and of course it will be a pleasure to help. So let's check the attendance, my friends. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. José Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, my friends, the one one of today was for Steven, but he's not here. If somebody wants to stay, of course, you can stay. See you tomorrow. Have a good night and dream in English. Thank See you. you. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye.